right, so here's the heavyweight contender, Curtis Razor Blades, Juco national champion at Harper College as a collegiate wrestler, and he has been one of the more prolific takedown artists this heavyweight division has ever seen. Yes, he's a very big, very strong, very skilled wrestler, but don't sleep on the hands yeah. of Curtis Blades. In the Justin Willis fight, you saw the wrestling set up the overhand right that put Willis down. And you've seen that from Curtis Blades, a guy that's so good at that one skill that it opens everything else up. Curtis Blades is a beast in the heavyweight division. He was massively disappointed that that Francis Ngannou rematch didn't go his way, but to your point, turned around quickly, beat Justin Willis, and got right back on that path to contention. We'll see how it goes for Curtis Blades here tonight. So here he is, the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion, Tom Aspinall. He has put UK on the map. And certainly Michael Bisping and Leon Edwards deserve a lot of credit. But now the UK has a heavyweight champion. And he hasn't even arrived at his fighting prime. We heard a lot about the grappling of Tom Aspinall and just how good he was in that realm. But his striking is outstanding. He's got the power to go with the speed. He moves as well with the footwork as any heavyweight on the roster. And that's really the big challenge for the opposition here tonight. Power to be sure on the other side, but how are they going to keep up with Tom Aspinall with the lateral movement, the jab, and everything else that he presents and poses on the feet? Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Curtis Razor. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Tom Espinal! One of the best in the business, Herb right. Dean, is our referee right. tonight. Right. Well, prevailing wisdom coming in was that Curtis Blades would go for the takedown early and often, but as his striking has developed over several years now on this UFC roster, he is able to present a lot of different looks to the opposition. So let's see if Blades will go to the wrestling realm tonight or maybe strike a little bit more than we've seen in fights past. Well, connection with the left from the champ. That hook was bad. Early round one action here, and just like that, he gets him to the ground. Feels like a pretty significant moment here early, Chen. I mean, it's no secret what this guy wants to do. This guy wants to take you down and he wants to grind you out. He got the takedown early. Let's see how long he can control this position and what amount of damage can he inflict on his opponent. Oh, he's got his back. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Blades. Oh, flattened him on his back there. Another ground and pound strike lands. If you're the bottom fighter, DC, what do you do? You got to move, you got to shrimp, you got to get off in a hip to try to move your opponent off of you or pull him down to close the space. 
Now Blades is much safer position there being in side control. Blades making these ground strikes count. All right, so perhaps he's gonna have to address something defensively. There is a legitimate cut around his eye. Yeah, he got cut on the eye from that last strike. He's gotta pay attention now before it gets worse. The ground strikes starting to pile up. Blades is right back to the full mount. Ground and pound strike there now. He's very accurate in the ground and pound and is showing because he's landing so consistent. Oh, going to town with the hammer fist here. Good work on the ground and pound by Blades. Right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. Every strike he lands, that cut gets worse. Yeah, it's getting worse. And he needed to address it a little bit sooner because now that damage is starting to pile up. Well, he's worked very hard on this part of his game, and these ground strikes are really starting to take their toll. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, he gets denied. Block! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. Oh, effective utilization of the ground and pound here by Curtis Blades. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment, yep. Continuing to work out of the half guard. Lands with the ground and pound. Oh, nice job to split his guard and get the ground strike home again. Working in half guard here, making these shots count. Aspinall's trying to lock up on a submission now. Oh, good technique there. He's got the triangle choke locked in. Oh, he got out. How good is that? This guy is so aware. He never leaves anything long to allow for himself to get some. Win the scramble. Win the scramble. 45 seconds remain in the round. Well, as usual, suffocated work from the top here by Blades. He's going after that cut over and over again. And every time he lands, the cut gets worse. 30 seconds to go. <laughs> 20 seconds to go in round one. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Another ground and pound strike lands for this man. Aspinall's really bleeding heavily now. That cut is only getting worse by the minute. Round two is next. Stop. All right, back to the stools now, and he is no longer the handsome man we once knew. That gash is getting right, serious. Relax. You are fine. We expected a bloody fight. We knew this was going to happen. We expected that more. Refocus. All right, we'll re-rack some replays from the previous round as they attend to that pretty nasty cut in his eye area. You got to lock in defensively, man. You cannot be out there just fighting. His opponent is too high level to try to fight him with his ego. Now he's dealing with a nasty cut over his eye. Why do you need another thing to manage when you already got one of the best fighters in the world in front of you? Ready to fight? Ready. Let's do All right, it. round two. Oh, and that kick is blocked. Nice punch to the head. And yet another hook connected there by Curtis Blades. Great timing on that double leg. Aspinall's in half court. Now he's going full mount. Beautiful 
in transition. Well, if you like blood, maybe this is the fight for you, but that cut just continues to get targeted by well, his opponent. Well, he's a bloody mess, J.A. He's been beat up. The guy has been targeting the eye, and now the cut is at a stage that I don't know if he's going to be able to be in there much longer. And now he's inside control. All right, he's got him in the north-south position now. I know the crowd thinks it's funny when this happens, but if you're the bottom fighter, uh, nothing funny about it. It's not funny. This is not a fun position to be in in fighting. You've got to try and change it immediately because you are carrying someone's weight, whether it's their bottom half weight or the top half. You are carrying their weight, whether you got their armpit in your face or you got their legs over the top of you. It is not comfortable. So you need to be trying to move, make them make a decision, a determination as to what they're trying to accomplish and then you try and counter them. You can't take all those unanswered strikes. They don't have to be that damaging. Yeah. You just gotta move. Aspinall's back to the north-south position now. Mm, that was nice. Let's go. Side control now. Aspinall's back in full out. You gotta start to get to the get up process. Because everybody talks like you just get up, you don't. It's a process, right? You get to the underhook, you build to the elbow, then you start to gain height to get back to your feet. It's work. Stop it. It's work. Stay in control. Stay in control. Aspinall's attempting a triangle here. Let's see if he can finish the deal. Oh, compromising spot here. Triangle choke is locked in. You gotta be kidding me, he's out. Well, defense doesn't always win championships in MMA, but how about the submission defense tonight? Gordon, one attempt after the next. Yeah, and the fact that he's just constantly under attack tells you he was very prepared for the type of fighter that he was in front of. He knew there would be some submissions coming his way. He was ready to defend them, and he has done that beautifully. Under two minutes now to go in round two. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Really good job to land these strikes from top position. Oh, man, another strike. Look at it right there to stop it, and he will. Wow. Wow. How about it? Make the bad man stop. A nice stoppage win for him here tonight. And the other side just couldn't handle the incoming assault. A flurry of punches, most of them upstairs. And when those big shots land repeatedly, the referee has no choice but to step in and call the fight. Let's get it inside the octagon where Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 18 seconds of round number two. Declared the winner by TKO and new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Curtis Blazer. Well, Curtis plays with another big W here tonight, and perhaps this is a guy who could eventually find his way into a UFC championship fight. I thought he put all the skills together beautifully here tonight. Curtis Blades, all of a sudden a major factor in this UFC heavyweight division.